Thank you, Chair Julissa Ferris Copeland, for your leadership in negotiating the city budget. OMB Director Dean Fulan, I've been asking some of these questions for years. Each time you promise to get back to me, I follow up for answers. And despite progress on many issues for these, uh, but for these questions that remain, I've, I've gotten nothing. So this is our last go round in my first term, and I'm hoping it shouldn't take an entire city council term to get these answers. So. I, I'm glad you're recognizing, though, that many of the answers, I mean, you're not going to go over the ones that have actually been done. I, I did that at preliminary, but so, uh, and I'm also not going to do the, the funny questions uh, that, that folks may have thought were funny, but may have tried your patience, but so. I, you, it, I was happy answering them. You can ask anything you want. I'm happy to talk so about that. These are going to be very similar to the last ones. Okay. So will you agree to adopt performance budgeting, tying spending to achievable goals which is already mandated by the city charter, section 12 for the mayor's management report to include, quote, a relationship between the program performance goals and corresponding appreciation. So we, the same way we did on the open portal and the information you requested last year, we believe working with city operations that for the September commitment plan, we can achieve the kinds of things that you're asking for. But, you know, we should be sitting down and have, we're prepared to sit, we're prepared to continue. It's between now and September. We have already started this process. We have been working with operations. It was only in March that, that the question was asked. It is a complicated question. It's something that comes out in September, and we're prepared to, to make modifications to, to get to the question and, and what we believe we're committed, we're reaching right. what's required in the city charter, but we, can we do more? We believe we can. Great. Uh, that's really good news. Look forward to sitting down with you before September. Uh, and so uh, similarly... Right. I, I indicated it's yeah. the change. The change you're requesting is I'm, in the mayor's it, management. It, it, if it's in the mayor's management report, I'm, I'm a Correct. happy camper, and Correct. as is uh, uh, the mayor's office of operations, which I like to call MOO. Uh, so the, uh, when you buy a car, you have to budget for maintenance. When will the city budget reflect our out your spending to maintain the billions in new capital. For example, the City Council requested $169 million to repair an existing park, the East River Esplanade, that is literally falling into the river. Uh, I got a $100 million new park instead, so how much can we count on the money to repair the Esplanade that's falling, and can I count on out year money to maintain the brand new park that we're going to get? So the mayor, when he talked about the vision for the Manhattan Greenway, talked about for all, that was one first step. And if you recall, and I think he did this in the presentation to the council, he indicated other areas where there needs to be work. And that work goes from repairs to places that are are actually have no funded. service. What he said was there was going to be, we, were, we had put money aside for a six-month study for EDC to actually look at the entire the entire greenway and see what was needed and how we move forward. Great. And I'll that was follow. part of the vision that he presented to you. But I think just as we're doing capital spending, we should be putting in. So, I mean, so we are spending significant amounts of money. When we mm -hmm. talk about, about the size of that capital budget, so a I'm huge portion of that off, is, but well, I have to answer the question, a sure. huge portion of that is about state of good repair. When we are putting huge resources into DEP, we're talking about state of good repair. When we're doing it in transportation, we're talking about state of good repair. This administration has made a very aggressive commitment to state of good repair. Doesn't mean that every single capital infrastructure that we inherited is going to happen tomorrow. It okay. means planning for that and recognizing that and making the energy, making the efficiency moves we're doing. And we're doing that throughout the entire 10-year capital Both strategy. Both the city council and parks believe that we need 169 million to maintain the East River Esplanade and, and repair it. So I, that was missing from the executive. Well, one, like to once see again, it. you're going to see, uh, we, we have had, the mayor asked for a, a different assessment. He's asked for an assessment by EDC, okay. which is going to be coming back so, so within just, six months. So folks have touched on the contract overruns. We've been talking about this $4 billion and the fact that we're paying more for what we contract. Uh, do we have an answer on what's happening, why we're having so many overruns, and where we are in terms of life cycle counting? And then the other question we'll follow many of my colleagues on is, 
The city is currently $72 billion in debt, and you plan on borrowing an additional $19 billion, up $2 billion since I asked you at the preliminary, for $91 billion by 2021, which exceeds the city's constitutional debt limit, uh, which is $90 billion. So we're actually now planning to borrow more than we can now in the future. Uh, that ups us from $84,000 today to $10,700 of debt per child born in 2021. It's great to borrow tens of billions now, but what will the next mayor do and how do we reconcile this? So you're asking about vital city infrastructure that needs to be improved, and that's what we're doing. We're addressing that. We are also forecasting, and you know this, and you know that we're maintaining all benchmarks and we're certainly not going to exceed any debt limits, that we are forecasting at a very cautious, very cautious debt service forecast, at very high interest rate assumptions, which, which we have not achieved. We are being very cautious about that debt level so that we know as we move forward on capital planning, if we need to make adjustments where we make those. But we are well below 15% of city tax which has been the benchmark, will continue to that benchmark, will you're continue hit to be cautious. You're going to hit 1.5% below. You're, you're, you're getting dangerously close. I, once again, we believe that the 10-year the capital strategy is in aggregate, in aggregate, an achievable and appropriate amount. What we do agree with you on is the phase-in, which is part of what you're looking at when you talk about the uh, the four-year capital financial, when you talk about the financial plan, that the phasing in of that strategy needs to be adjusted. And the mayor actually said this in his conversation with several of you last week, that he we recognize that, and that's one of the things we're going to be working with you on between now and September. So I You didn't give me that opportunity. <laughs> So just to go into the prop problem with the contracts and the capital that I think a lot of folks have alluded to, uh, now going into my fourth year, I don't know if any of my capital projects have actually happened yet, I think one or two. Uh, and what ends up happening is we're doing a green roof, so we set aside $2 million. They do scope, now it's $3 million, so we give them another million. Then they do design, now it's going to be $5 million. And it's one of those situations where we, we can never catch up with it. and there's something wrong with the system where, where the costs double and triple on us. Um, so just please, if we can get that done and, and focus on the small dollars, because when we're doing participatory budgeting, we're right. 2,400. Did you vote in PB, Dean? May, may, I, may I respond? Yes, yeah, to, but to, did you vote in PB? I did not. I don't know if I. Okay, let the record reflect two people from OMB <laughs> voted in PB, but next time we want to see every I, hand It up. will never happen again. <laughs> um, the, but I want to respond to your point. The, um, the, one of the, when I said we need to work with, with you on this, is mm -hmm. when your project comes forward, we actually do need to, to see if there's a way for when when members initiate that that we are doing that there's some way to work together with council staff and us to understand is that the right amount to actually effectuate the project will OMB, so that you don't get caught up at the end will OMB allow us to just allocate the capital for scope so that we can allocate for scope well, and then once we see what the project is then allocate for design so right now we're allocating the whole amount of money and it's understood and, the money and, does nothing and, for and it's one of the things i've said to the chair we okay. should talk as we're moving forward one okay. of the things we should talk about is how to address that problem so and there may be many ways so, to so let me it. just I, i'm going to follow up with this. sure just assume i've asked the question about the capital reserve and i join my voice with others uh we're at 10.7%. The recommendation is 18%. We should be including the reserves by at least 50%. Uh, this morning, 596 Acres authored an opinion editorial in City and State warning that the city is planning to lean sale, a leaning sale that will jeopardize 349 nonprofits that own properties that should not be subjected to taxes, let alone sold. Additionally, 1,155 vacant lots that the city can use from everything from affordable housing to uh, school seats. Uh, will you protect these properties? They, they go on sale next week. Uh, we will, I will, I'll get back to you on where that is in the, you're giving me information I have to, I have to get familiar with, to be fair. 
So I, 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 let and, me get then the, the, with the it. The reframe is back. I need school seats. The city needs school seats. Yes, the we, mayor we just do announced. understand. <laughs> the mayor just announced a 3K. Uh, 2025 is further along than either of us will be in office. It needs to be 2021. And will you amend the SCA capital plan from the 80,000 seats to now, I guess, 160,000 seats to reflect the additional no, uh, I, three year olds? No. We, we, I, I we think, can add those three-year-olds without new seats? No, I think we are in the early stages of this, and we need to see what capacity we need for the three-year-olds and what capacity we can use within the existing SCA capital plan. So I think you, of all people, given your traditional line of questioning on this, is that we should step back as we move forward on 3K what seats are available. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have to add capital seats, but I don't think we should tomorrow add those capital seats without knowing where we need them and what other resources we have. Once again, we're going to be using provider networks as well as we did on UPK. Can you, can you commit to getting to a, a fully funded and fully filled uh, pre-K in my district at least and that making sure we have pre-K for all on the east side? I, we're going to have to work with you to achieve that. As I know, the UPK, the UPK team is working with you to make sure you have UPK seats. I just, I don't think you get to. Councilmember Kalos, your time's up, okay? The chair told me I'm next, so. <laughs> you, you, you got it, but. Uh, you Seniors is important. You're the senior, right? I say year of the four-year-old, and so we're hoping well, to get to pre-K. You got universal pre-K. We haven't we, gotten. We don't. Uh, we don't in my district. We have 304-year-olds going to school uh, in your district.